Okay, so let's try to create the root environment. Uh, I already have the solution here, but I want to create it from scratch with you. So uh, first, what I need to do is I need to require hw5util. And um, I'm going to add error trace just so I have better debugging information. Um, and I will be creating you know, the same API that already exists in hw5util, but I want to do it with you so that you understand a bit better what's going on behind the scenes. So what is the root environment? Uh, let's see how I called it. I did, uh, okay. So as you might remember, we have a heap and the heap um, creates, um, well, we have something that is called the empty heap. Let's see. Where is it, the heap empty? Let's create, okay, let's open the terminal. Okay. Uh, racket and uh, lecture 25. Okay, so if we do heap empty, we start with an empty um, heap, okay? But we need to start with the base, you know, the root uh, environment somewhere. So let's, let's allocate. So if we do uh, heap allocate, okay, what do we want to heap allocate? We want to Perhaps uh, let's remember that we also have something called uh, empty frame, right? So we need the, the initial frame of the initial uh, root. So let's see what that is. The initial frame should just have, um, oh, empty frame doesn't exist. Let me see, frame empty, oh, root frame. That's how I call it, okay. So as you remember, uh, a frame it's, uh, a frame is just a struct that has the parent and the locals. So the root frame is not going to have a parent. So let's look at the root frame. Oops. Um, let me comment this out. We don't, that doesn't exist. So let's see what, what we create. Okay, so this is the empty, the root frame because it starts with no parent and no um, variables defined. Okay, so we have that. Uh, now we might want to allocate, allocate um, a root frame, right? So that's going to create the first, uh, the parent frame, right? So let's say, uh, let's see what the result of that is. So if we allocate, uh, we need to say which heap. So let's do it on the empty heap. So currently we're saying you're forgetting a, a parameter because I didn't say which heap we're allocating on. So it's, let's allocate a root frame on the heap, on an empty heap. If we do that, what do we get? We get an effect, right? If you remember, if you recall, whenever you allocate something in a heap, what that gets you, gets you is the new heap where I allocated something. And what will I get back um, on the left hand side? So you get um, allocated allocation. Let's define the allocation of the empty of the first frame. First frame uh, EFF, right? So this is an EFF. Uh, I can do two things with an EFF. I can get EFF state uh, a first frame. And that will return the, um, the heap, the new heap. And I can do um, the result of the first allocation, which should give me the root handle. So this will be E0, right? So let's, oops, let's do that, EFF. Okay. So the root heap is exactly this one, is a heap that contains the first handle and the empty, uh, the root frame. Okay, so this is, um, this is the root heap, right? Uh, let's define root heap to be the state, the new state, and define E0 to be uh, exactly this. So E0 is going to be, um, 
palette is zero, handle zero. Okay, so now let's look at the slides. Um, I called the root environment um, root heap. So this should be the root environment. Right. And to this easier, I called it root mem. Oh, sorry, got the other way around. The mem is the heap. The memory is what I'm calling the heap, and the environment is the reference to the environment. So root n should point, uh, and beyond should point to the um, to e zero should be e zero. Let's let's confirm our. I'm saying root n beyond. Oops, sorry. Uh, that should return easy, handle zero. Okay, and now I have my root memory. This is a memory that only contains a frame. So if I go back to my slides, it would be initialized with an empty box that is handle zero. Okay. So now let's try to recreate um, this example. To be able to do that, we need to define a put, right? So that we can do a put of three and then a put of five. So let's do that. How do we do a put uh, and Viron put? Okay, so uh, environ put takes what? Takes a memory. And then it takes uh, some handle, which we call the environment. Uh, and then what do we need to put? We need to put, right, we have this parameter, this parameter, and this parameter. So the first one is going to be the handle. The implicit one is, of course, the global memory. And then we have these three parameters. So the first one is going to be uh, environment. The second is the variable var and then value okay so what should we do when we do that well we need to um so memory we know it's a heap right so what do we do we do a heap uh, we need to look up the frame that is in the heap allocated with handle zero so what we do is and uh is it ref i think it's ref uh on my memory give me the frame associated with uh, environment env. So I'm going to call that define frm. Uh, and I'm just going to return it for now, just so you can see that it's environ put. I'm going to put in my roots uh, memory, uh, in my roots environ, I'm going to put um, the variable x, and I'm going to put the number, uh, the number, let's see which number, three. Okay. So let's just see that we were able to look up the right frame. And you can see that uh, I did some mistake. It's not ref, I think it's get, keep get. Okay, so the heap get will return the frame the root frame, basically. Okay, so now we have the root frame, which is a frame. Uh, remember that we implemented the frame put operation. So a frame put operation takes a frame, and then a variable, and then a value, right? So what does that return? It returns the new frame. So define new frame to be that. So let's see uh, this working. Okay, the new frame now contains x assigned to 3, which is great. Um, now what do I need to do? I have my new frame, I have to update it. So how do I update it? I have to update my heap. So I do heap put. Okay, what do I put? I'm going to put the new frame in the same handle, right? So the same handle, same reference. I'm going to update the reference of E0. Uh, and I'm going to do new frame. Uh, of course, First parameter is the memory, which is given by parameter, parameter. And, okay, so what do we return when we do heap put? It returns the new memory. So, okay, so we get um, the new heap back, which is what we wanted. Okay, so this is basically how environment put works.
um, essentially what we do is we the heap is our central point where we have all the frames stored and if we want to put something it has to be on an existing frame so you have to take the environment which is the reference where the frame is allocated and then we just delegate the put operation to the frame which is what is happening here we get the new frame and we update it by using heap put so heap put replace the whole frame and frame put uh, mutates the frame so creates a new one. mutates under quotation marks you create a new one um, okay so let me look at the um, <clears throat> put so now let's look at push um, how would we implement push so okay let me comment this out uh, push is we want to allocate a new frame because we are calling a function and it needs a new frame to be able to you know pass the parameters and not affect the global the the parents frame so how do we do that we define um, environment environment uh, push which takes a memory um, and then let's look at the operation we need the parent handle as an input we need the variable and the value so th that's all we need so is e1 an input parameter no in this case e1 is actually an output parameter uh, which is different than uh, whoops i need to pause the video so when in a put we know that e0 is an out an input parameter you need to know which handle you are performing a put but in this case of a push e1 is actually an output parameter so it's something that we're returning uh, the inputs are the new handle and the x and the y the the variable and the value so let's continue doing that so we need uh, environments we need the the environment put uh, and then var and val okay so now what we do we define um, the the handle uh, we need to remember how we implemented uh, frame lock so if you recall what frame lock does is it creates a new frame so let's do an example we do frame a lock um, frame allocation it takes the environment so let's say the root environment uh, which is the handle and then it takes a variable and a value and it allocates a new frame for us so let's do that um, Let's see the output of, of just a frame a lock. Uh, of course, I did a mistake. It's not frame a lock. It's uh, what? Frame push. Sorry, frame push. Frame push. Okay, what does frame push do? Frame push just uh, creates a new frame, and as we talked about in the previous lesson, just adds that binding. Okay, so this is what we want to do. Uh, in our push, we want to uh, create a new frame, right? Which is basically this a frame push. So we're going to allocate our new initial uh, frame of a child. So we do frame uh, push. The input is the parent's uh, environment, and then we do variable and value, and we get the frame of the child. Uh, what do we do next? Well, the next thing we need to do is we need to have a new handle, right? The handle where we're going to allocate this new frame. Um, how do we do that? Well, it's essentially with the heap allocation. So we do heap alloc. That allocates a new frame. Right? So what do we return? We return, as you might remember, heap allocation. What does it return? If you remember here, it returns an effect which is the new heap and the handle for the new environment, right? So if I do environment push and my environment push, I'm pushing on my uh, root, root memory and I pass the root environment as the parent and I pass uh, these two values. What do we get? 
We had an error because root env is called nvron. Uh, Keep allocation, we're missing a parameter. Oh, of course, the memory. See, we're saying hippolock has an error team mismatch, and the only place where I used hippolock was here. So that's a pretty easy one, pretty easy one. Okay, so now I get the effect, I get the new heap, and I get the handle. Um, so let's actually let's recreate the example that we wanted. So we're gonna do first I'm gonna create the environment push. That's going to create a new um, define mem1. Okay, memory, memory one. We're going to have to store. So I'm trying to recreate this first box. So I have to push three and then five. And five, I have to assign it to y. But as you might remember, I need to get the, the value that returns from putting something because that's the new memory. So if I want to do two puts, I have to take the return value and pass to the second one. So I do an nvron, and now I have to pass mem1. The handle is the same, but the memory is changing. <clears throat> so now what do we do? Actually, let me indent, indent this. Um, the variable y and then d number five. Okay, so now I have this. Now, instead of doing a push on the root memory, let's do on mem1. If we do on memory one, we get an error. There was a typo somewhere. Uh, doo -doo -doo, and the run. Okay, so we're getting closer. Um, okay, define mem two three plus effects, right? Plus uh, e one and the one, right? Because if I do a push, I get the two things back. I get memory three and I get e one. Okay, so now let me do define memory three. Memory three is going to be the EFF state of uh, mem3 plus e1 and define um, e1 to be EFF result of uh, mem3 plus e1. Now I want to print mem3 just so you're convinced that the heap is. We do I have a bug? Parenthesis missing. I think it's here. Okay. Okay, so now this is my final heap, final heap that should contain this box and just m assigned to one. Actually, let me do push m assigned to one. So let me rerun that. So let's see if we have all three, all three assigns. We have the first one, which is, um, let's see, frame. Okay, so this is the frame of E0, which for some reason ha shows up at handle 0. Okay, so handle 0, what does it have? What is the frame associated with E0? It has the variable x and 3, but it does not have number 5 for some reason. Let's see, what did we do wrong? Ah, notice that we passed mem1, but we should have passed mem2. Because we passed mem1, we're actually doing a push on this memory and not on this memory. That's actually something I want to show you a bit after, but perfect time for an explanation. Uh, so we, we always have to be careful in threading, returning the memory to the right place. Otherwise, we are ignoring the side effects of this put. So what we want is the resulting memory that comes from there. So let's see if that shows up. Okay, so now we see hash, and then we see y, 
5, and then x, 3. Okay, so we have x and y, perfect. Do we also have the assignment of m to be 1? Let's see, handle 1 is assigned to m and 1, perfect. Actually, I have, as you might imagine, I have something that is, uh, quote, mem, is it mem? Or is it mem? Let's see if it's mem. Yes, quote mem just shows, um, you know, easier to read heap. So this is the heap that has E0 has X assigned to 3, Y assigned to 5, and E1 just has M assigned to 1. Okay, so now what we want to do, we also, also want to recreate... Um, Oh, actually, we should have done Z6 and XY. So let's do that so that you get the same handles. Um, Z and then 6. Okay, and now what we want to do, we want to put, we want to do a put on memory 3. Sorry. Just so we assign X to be set 3. So let's do uh, define memory 4. Uh, and we want to do an environ put. Okay. We want to do a put on memory 3, which is our last memory that we've done all the updates to. And now we want to do a print of memory 4. And what do we want to do? We want to do the variable of x to be 7. So x seven. Okay, so now let's see if our memory has the three the two bindings here. Oops. Environment put. Ah, we forgot the handle. So the handle should be E1. Okay, so now E1 has X to be X assigned to seven and Z assigned to six. Uh, next thing we need to do is let us do a push on handle two, right? So now we want to recreate this line. How do we do that? We do define memory five plus E2. Uh, what is that? That is environ push of memory four. Okay, and then we need to pass E0 and then M and one. So, the variable m and then the number one okay and finally let's just unpack this fine fine mem5 is the eff state of mem5 plus e2 and define uh, e2 to be eff results of mem5 plus e2. So now let me see if e5 worked. Uh, e0 is not defined. Oh, it's not e0, it's e1. Uh, oh, e0 is called root and we run because we want, we want the frame to connect to e0 and not to e1. Uh, and now we see that we have M1 there, perfect. So now finally what we want to do is we want M6 to be, you want to print M6, we want to do in Viron put of mem5, where we want to pass uh, to the environment E2, we want to add a new binding, which is Y assigned to two. Okay, so let's do the variable Y, number two. Let's just uh, move this down here. Let's see if that worked. Okay, m equals one and, and y assigned to two. Perfect. So now is the interesting part, which is we haven't defined. Uh, so we've covered uh, put and push right we talked about this next we need to do lookup right uh, so this is the example i just wrote but 
written in a more concise manner, I will uh, make available the example I have. Uh, actually, this prefix is incorrect, but when I upload it, I'll fix that, so don't worry about it. Okay, so the next, the last thing we want to do is we just want to uh, write this code. Let me uh, write it down. So what we want to do now is want to be able to write the lookup. How, what did I call it? Environment. So define environment and we're on get. Okay, so environment get needs to look up recursively um, from the current environment. And if it doesn't find it, it has to go up to the parent and look up the, the variable in the parent as well until it finds something or until it reaches the parent. So how, how do we implement that? We take a memory. Uh, let's look at how we uh, look it up. So we have e of x. So the in, in, input should be an environment and then a variable. Right? So what do we do? First thing we do is we, do, um, we know that the memory is a heap. So we need to look up the frame that is referenced by this env. So we do heap get, okay? And we take uh, the memory as the first parameter, and the key is the environment, so that's the reference to the frame. Uh, what we get is a frame. Perfect. So now we have the frame associated with this key. Uh, now what we need to do is we need to look up if that frame contains this variable. So let's see if it does. So we do uh, frame get right and what we do uh, we define the results of that and frame get of what of a frame what is the key is the variable right so as we might remember frame get just looks up on the hash table and if it fails it returns false so um, we do a cont where we check the results, right? We need to know, is the, the variable defined? If it's not, um, if it is, then the value, as you know, in racket, if the value is not false, then it counts as it, not the hash f. It counts as uh, a truth value. So if my result is not, no, not false, then what do I do? I found the variable. So I just return it. Otherwise, my result is false, right? So what do I need to do? I need to look up, I need to do environ get, okay? And I need to look up, it's the same memory, but my environment, I need to look up in the environment of my parents, okay? So how do I do that? I do um, frame, parent of my current frame, okay? And uh, I pass a variable, which is the same variable, right? Okay, and now there's one parenthesis missing, I hope. Perfect. So now let's see if we can look up, let's see if we can look up a variable and be on get. And what we're going to pass is memory six. And now I want to see if my E2 uh, has variable M defined. So let's do that, environment get. So I take E2 and I get variable, the variable M. So let's see if I can get one back. That's the easy case. Okay, I get number one back, so that's good. Um, next. I need to try um, y would be easy, but now let me see if I can look up a variable that is defined in E0. So if it's defined in E0, it could be x to be 3. So now let me do the same, but I want to do, I want to look up the variable x, and I'm expecting it to be 3. And I see that in fact is the number 3. So next, what I could do is um, m. Let's look up in, in this frame E1, x. No, actually, let's look up in this frame the variable y, because it's not defined in this frame, but it's defined in the frame of the parent. So let's do that. 
uh, what we have to write is environ get mem6. Now what we want is e1. The variable we want to look up is uh, y. Right? So let's see if that works. Okay, y is number five. So that's good, it, it fall, fell back to the parent and it looked up this binding. And in the case where we have, um, we, let's see if, if it does not fall, fall back and it retrieves the correct value, which is seven and not three. So let's see if environment get um, of mem6 of e1 of the variable x is in fact seven. Let's see what happens. Okay, that's all good, but eventually you might make a mistake. So what do you think will happen if I do environment get of my memory and I pass e1 and I do d variable foo, which is undefined? Um, in this case, it just will crash. It will crash with a weird thing. Uh, first, because I didn't type it correctly, but now that I did, uh, I get this weird error and it's saying that um, the heap is expecting the, where is it? Heap get is expecting a mem uh, heap, but I pass it false. And let's see why that happens. If you trace it back, you will note um, first this error message. Right? And then it's saying the contract, the contract that failed is the one of heap get, which I showed you in the previous lecture. So um, the error is triggered where? It's actually quite nice. We say that the error came from these two lines. So it was called here when I did a heap memory get but that came from this line which is in line 46 so when i do environment get i recursively go to this spot and now my memory is empty but why is that well it ha that's the case because frame parent when you get to the root uh, frame your frame is going to be false so what you need to check is additionally you need to check if the frame parent is not false and only if it's not false you will do that otherwise you get error and you say that the else you should throw an error and say that um, the variable is undefined so we'll just return an error and print out the variable so let's see what happens now Okay, it's saying that I need to return a string. Uh, let me do this, A. So this is the printf of racket. I have to do for format. Now I do this. And it says, an error. Yay, I got this error, which means the variable is not defined. We could even say, variable undefined and we might we don't even want the variable we want the variable name so we do uh, d variable name is it name or is it value uh, it might be name name okay variable undefined foo so now I have a nice error message, and we were able to define uh, enver and get, um, which represents this slide. Um, and finally, if you want to write this example, you might want to parse directly using parse mem. And that will give, give you um, the heap that I, this is the output of, of parse mem. Um, so, as we had before, we also have a parse, a parse function that is able to, given an S expression, generate the, the data structures that we need. That's basically it. That's the last bit that you needed for homework five. Uh, so I wish you good luck on that.